until 2003. It's really a fantastic car, and I think I'm pretty freaking lucky to have it. So this is the Silverstone Blue. Um, we'll get into some engine specs and do a uh, interior tour in a moment. I've got some footage. I don't know if I'm going to put it in, just uh, some still shots, still video shots, anyways, of the car. Uh, we're not going to go out for a drive today. It's not the best weather, and I'm still kind of feeling out the stick shift, but uh, we'll definitely get that soon. Here's the back of the car. You can obviously see, uh, you can definitely spot an M5 due to a couple um, subtle changes that BMW have done to the exterior of the car. One, the diffuser on the trunk lid. That is, uh, I believe, only with the M5. The uh, exhaust pipes, you're going to see uh, quad tailpipes here in chrome. Um, it was just washed, so you see a little bit of orange in there right now. Um, one thing I do not like about the 1997 through the 2000 M5 is the black trim. Not that big of a deal, but you can see it on the bumper, and as the door goes down the car, you can see that black trim. As far as wheels and tires are concerned, this, uh, this M5 is rear-wheel drive. I think all BMWs uh, of this year, the 2000 time frame, are rear-wheel drive. So really, uh, really, that's just a more sporty um, way to give the power to the road. Uh, these wheels are the M wheels, surprisingly enough. Um, I like them. These are the summer wheels. They're about two inches wider in the back. They have bigger tires on them. These are Michelin Pilot Sports. I have winter wheels too. They look the same, just without the M badging on the wheels, but they're a little uh, thinner, so it'll be better in the winter with um, maybe Blizzax or some um, Goodyear tire on them. This is that diffuser I was talking about on the trunk lid. This is the interior of the M5. It's the, the newer models from 2001 until 2003 had a larger satellite navigation display without the tape deck um, front here. Uh, it's nice. The tachometer goes to 8,000 RPM. I believe it's a 7,000 red line. Six-speed transmission here, obviously a stick shift. The emergency brake here. Uh, the M5 is nice and unique because it has this aluminum trim here, which is real nice. Only cons about that is it uh, gets a little nicked up after use, uh, for example, on the shifter knob, the e-brake handle, and the uh, cigarette tray here. But uh, that is relatively easily replaced. Down here is your dual zone climate control. You're going to have your residual heat. It'll store heat from the engine to heat the car at a later time, which is nice. Heated front seat, sport button. That's going to quicken up your shift, uh, make your suspension a little harder, and make the car a little faster. DSC is uh, dynamic stability control. That'll be nice in the winter, and uh, if you're an unexperienced driver, your other seat controls over here, heated seats. Cup holders here, they're a little small, but uh, who really needs those? Here is your uh, cigarette lighter and power supply. You're going to find, uh, again, your GPS there. I'll go ahead and stick the key in, and we'll take a quick look at that. But I'll try to get some higher resolution video of it in a minute. Here it is. Uh, you can definitely tell it's a bit dated, but it still works. GPS, uh, the maps are a little slow, but it works. You know, for 2000, this was pretty good. You can have your um, ventilation on here, onboard computer. That's going to tell you all of your gas mileage, your range, all that information. Nice, uh, nice setup here. You can switch between your FM, AM radio, your CD player. The sound system in here is not bad. You know, it's nothing to brag about, but it's not bad. There are speakers all over the place. There's two here in the front, two on the door, and then there's uh, several in the back. So it's a really nice, uh, as far as amplifying the sound, it gets pretty loud. The bass is good. You do have tone controls there, just like the bass, treble, fader, and balance, which is nice. We'll go into that onboard computer, which is uh, you can set a speed limit if you have a kid that you don't want driving it too fast, but all it does is bong when you pass that. My gas mileage right now, I'm getting 14.8. Outside temperature, 79 degrees. It's going to go uh, go through all that information for you. And then we'll try to load up a GPS map here. This is not the most intuitive system in the world, but being a tech enthusiast, I, uh, I feel I've gotten it pretty well. It's going to load the lake I happen to be next to. As you can see, it's not, not very quick. You can select 
the uh, scale that it's on. Really, I would only plan on using this if I'm going on a long trip. I really don't know where I'm going, and I definitely need some directions. It'll talk to me. It'll tell me what to do. It's got the, the cell phone. I don't know if you can see up here. It's got the uh, cell phone integration, which I haven't really played with yet. Um, but it's, it's nice. You can turn on your vents from here. I'll show you how that works. Air conditioning is found down here. You can select your uh, temperature on both sides, airflow settings, and then your fan speed. So that's pretty nice. Uh, pretty nice interior. It's really comfortable. I'm six foot two. Plenty of headroom. I've got another two inches. Um, as far as brake and clutch, they're far enough apart. It's got a nice long clutch to it. Um, for some reason, I have trouble hitting second gear. Just pull it back, obviously, but whenever I let the clutch up, it's a little jerky, so I'm still trying to figure that out. Reverse is going to be over, push harder, straight up left like an Audi, and then six, um, because people ask for some reason, is over, and down to the right, of course. Um, storage is good, except this thing here doesn't open, it just slides. Again, don't know how much of that you can see, I do apologize for that, but that's nice there. Headlight controls and fog lights are up here. Interior lighting is orange. It's Pretty nice, I'm happy with it. On the steering wheel here, you're going to have your, your cruise control, your uh, cell phone controls, volume up and down, change your song. Um, one negative thing about the interior of this car, the CD player is in the trunk. They did that because it's a six-disc CD changer, and the technology in 2000 wasn't that good where they could put it right up in here, and with the GPS, there wasn't that much room. So we'll go ahead and take a look back there and uh, see what that CD changer looks like in the trunk. One more thing on the interior before we head to the back. Up here, you've got a really nice, I didn't know if I was going to like it at first, it's kind of like a suede material. It's uh, on the roof of the interior roof of the vehicle, the, um, the pillars here, all over. It looks really good, and uh, I would guess it'd be difficult to clean, but don't get it dirty. So up here, this is your sunroof control. If you pull this back, pull it back, it'll just open all the way. You can stop any time, push it forward, it'll close. Push this thing up, it'll open up like that to get some heat out, and back, it'll go back down. Here's a speaker in your um, cell phone. This car does not have the garage door opener, which is a bit of a con, but not that big of a deal. Here are your uh, interior lights, both of these, um, your mirror, of course. Then these are actually pretty nice. Um, nice, very, really nice leather. I should compliment this car. The leather in here is really quite nice. For having 147,552 miles on it, it's really in good shape. Both of these uh, work the same. You pull this to the side. When you open that, the mirror is exposed. Very nice mirror um, in, return, in respect. You can actually see yourself. The mirror in the Ferrari we have is uh, miserable. It's like all wrinkled. So lights come on when you open that. Close it. Lights go off. Put it away. You're done looking at yourself. Okay, so here's the trunk. Um, before we get in there, I'll show you how this key works. The car comes with two master keys. It's really a nice looking key. It's a rechargeable battery. The battery charges when it's in the ignition. So if you have two keys, it's recommended that you use the one that you don't use on the everyday, at least once a year, to charge the internal battery. Pretty simple too. There's three buttons on here. This top one will unlock the car. Press it once, it'll unlock the driver's door. It'll make a sound too. Close this back door here. You can hear what it sounds like. Alright, so hit the BMW logo and the car locks. Press it again right after you lock it. The interior lights stay on and the, uh, the motion sensor inside is turned off. The motion sensors in the car realizes if you leave the window open, somebody sticks their head in, they're looking for something, the alarm goes off. Pretty good technology. Um, hit it again, hit it twice, it'll turn that off and leave the lights on if you're going to leave your kid or dog or something in the car. So the top button, press it once, unlocks the driver's door. Press it again, unlocks the rest of the doors, the fuel filler cap, and the trunk lid. This bottom button here is also a trunk lid um, release, and that opens it a little bit. So you don't want to hit that and then drive away somewhere. If you press and hold that trunk lid button, the alarm goes off for extra security. Under here there's a handle. Push it in, it releases the latch. Pull it up. Here's your trunk. It's 11.1 .1 cubic feet of storage. It's pretty good. Um, I've seen better, I've seen worse, but for a M5 with the kind of sporting credentials this thing has, it's uh, pretty good. Okay, so in the trunk you're going to see uh, I have an extra passenger side floor mat in here. It just came with the car. Uh, guess he replaced it and put the old one back here. 
On the left side is the, this is not the CD player, it's the navigation um, DVD reader. Open that up, you're going to find your CD player down here. Move that out of the way, press the eject button, it pops up. Inside this plastic cartridge, I've definitely seen higher quality, um, this is where you're going to put your CDs. It works, it's not the best way to do it, but it works, and I guess that's what matters. Good thing nobody listens to CDs anymore. On the right side is where you're going to find all of your fuses, nothing you need on the everyday, just a crap load of fuses in there. We'll go ahead and take this mat out and check under here. In the trunk, this is where you're going to find the battery. It's a pretty large battery. I think it's 960 cold cranking amps. Here's your battery. We've already had to replace it. It's like $200. Um, your negative or positive terminal is there. Move this piece out of the way and in here you're going to find some pretty cool stuff. Move this piece of styrofoam and there's an air compressor in here for your tires. This only comes on the M. Open this up, there's a power switch. Plug this into your power supply on the car. Then there is, there is your um, pressure gauge and the thing you put on the tire of the car to pump it up comes with some instructions on how to use it and it's got a really long cable on it which is nice so you can plug this into your car and reach all four tires so definitely a nice safety feature that put BMW ahead of the pack and uh, really keeps them ahead of the pack inside this piece here is uh, another I guess maybe that's what you put on the tire I don't know haven't had to use it hope I never do but it is nice to have if you're get a flat you just need some air to keep it um, for a few hours so we'll put this back in and there is this piece. This really pretty simple back here, just lots of pieces and parts. And the mat. One thing I will add, um, you probably noticed on the back here, in the bumper, you can see the rust in there I have to clean out. On the back bumper here, uh, there are